I'm Sarah Howard from Image Scene and we're here today in waterfall country, the Vale of Neath, South Wales, to photograph some of these wonderful waterfalls. And this is just one of the many locations that we go to as part of Image Scene throughout the UK. But I have to say this is probably one of my favourite. And today I'm going to show you a few tips and techniques as to how about getting the perfect waterfall shot. Now on arrival at our location, the first thing to do is really take a good look at the scene in front of you and look for any potential distractions. So when you're thinking about your composition, you're looking for things that may not really add to the scene in front of you. So for example, a fallen tree or, or any sort of mess um, in the river or anything that's going to not add to the overall image. The other thing to be aware of as well is the light and today we're really lucky we have very subdued lighting which is actually perfect for photographing this kind of woodland scene. So you're not going to have issues with high contrast and lots and lots of reflections. So I've chosen my spot, this is where I'm going to take my image from. Really, really good to have a nice sturdy tripod. It's absolutely essential for any landscape photographer. It helps stabilise the camera, but it also really helps you when you're composing your shots. Also, you want a cable release. So now I've got my camera on the tripod, I don't want to move it. So we want to make sure we're not jogging it in any way. And just to help make sure that everything's nice and straight, really good to have one of these little hot shoe spirit levels just so that we can make sure we're not at a strange sort of angle. Set up my shot now and I put it on live view on the back of the camera so I can actually show you what I've chosen to photograph from here. So as you can see I've got the waterfall which is the main feature of the image over towards the left hand side so we're slightly following the rule of thirds here. I've also got a really nice flow of water coming throughout the image which hopefully is going to take the eye into the scene. You can see I've also got a nice big rock in the foreground and there's some really lovely light now on the waterfall and also on the trees as well. Now the light changes really really quickly. It may be that our camera is going to struggle to record the highlights and the shadows accurately at this point in time but we'll see how we get on. So that's essentially the composition I've chosen. What I'm now going to look at is the camera settings themselves so the aperture and the shutter speed and also whether or not I need to use any filters at all. So the first thing to think about then is our camera settings. So you want to really consider what effect do you actually want to achieve. So do you want to freeze the motion of the water? Do you want to give it a slightly sort of milky effect? Do you want to record the movement of the water? Now I'm actually going to give it a milky effect. So I've chosen an aperture in this instance of f11 and that should also give me a reasonably good depth of field as well, which is important. So I want everything nice and sharp from front to back. So I'm working in an aperture priority, which is what you would do for most landscape photography. Now I can see already that I'm going to have problems with reflections on the water. And although that, that looks okay to my eyes, but on the actual image itself, it's going to be quite distracting. So I'm going to use what's known as a polarising filter to help remove that white light reflection off the surface of the water and also the other thing it does is it really slows down your shutter speed which is what I want to do in this instance. So I'm going to pop my polarising filter in here in the filter holder. Now. Hopefully you can see, essentially here I've not actually got the polarising filter in the correct position. So we've got a lot of reflection on the water in the foreground. Now as I twist it, you should hopefully start to see that reflection disappearing. 
and now you can see some of the rocks really showing through nicely underneath the water itself. So I really like that effect. So I'm going to go with that and also my polarizer is also saturating the colours so those greens are really really looking nice and punchy now which is what I want. So I've got my filter on, I've decided on the aperture. I now need to think about whereabouts I'm going to focus. So generally with landscape photography it would be a third of the way in and I'm actually on autofocus in this instance and I'm focusing round about on the rock right in the, in the centre there. If I just point you can see, so just about here. So that should mean I get nice front to back sharpness. And I think I'm going to need a slightly longer exposure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a neutral density filter as well, which also helps block out light. So I'm going to pop this in. and just show you we've now got a reading of 1.6 seconds so that's actually going to give us a really really nice milky effect on the water now what may happen is we may end up blowing our highlights and I'll show you in a second the histogram so that you can see that but I would suggest that you bracket your shots so I've actually set my camera up, so I'm going to bracket in two thirds of the stop. Now, if we look on the back of the camera, I've got my histogram up here. And if we look at this one, in this instance, we've underexposed by two thirds of a stop. And looking at our histogram, we can see it's bunched up towards the left hand side. So that's quite a large proportion of the image is, is in shadow. If we look back at the previous one, we've got a more even shaped histogram. And on this one here, it looks to me like we've actually blown our highlights, which means we've overexposed the image. And if I switch the highlight indicator on, you might be able to just see we've got some flashing white up here. So that indicates the areas that are actually overexposed where we've lost detail. But because I've taken the three shots, one of those I think is going to be fine. So I'd always recommend doing this. Don't forget you need to consider your ISO. So we go to the lowest ISO possible always, generally with most landscape photography, and that's going to give you the highest quality image. So in this instance, I've got my ISO on 200. So let's just recap. Don't be in too much of a hurry to get the camera out the bag. Thoroughly check out your location, look for any distractions, and be aware of what the light is doing. Think carefully about your composition as well. So look for foreground interest and something to draw the eye into the main point of interest in the scene. And then of course you need to consider your camera settings. So the aperture you're going to use, the ISO and the shutter speed, all of which come together to create the image that you want. Now I've just gone over this really briefly with you today, but to find out a little bit more about what we offer, join one of our workshops you can refer to the website imagescene.co.uk for information on everything that we do. And I hope to see you on one of them.